Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Montana this morning on this Wednesday. The time is 647, 19 degrees to greet you as you step out the door. Let's go ahead and jump into news. Our top story this Wednesday morning, President Trump used an Oval Office address last night to frame the fight for a border wall as a crisis of the heart and soul. The president blamed Democrats for the partial government shutdown. That's now in its 19th day. President Trump also repeated the White House's demand for $5.7 billion to fund a wall along the Mexican border. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer delivered the Democrats' rebuttal to the president's speech. Senator Schumer called the shutdown a manufactured crisis. Congresswoman Pelosi accused the administration of, quote, holding the American people hostage. Both Senators John Tester and Steve Daines want the shutdown to end, but for Senator Tester, he thinks what's already been offered is enough. In a statement to Q2, he said, quote, Republicans and Democrats in the House and Senate already passed legislation to reopen the government and secure our borders. It's time for the president to work with both parties to protect our local communities and put folks back to work. Meanwhile, Senator Dane zeroed in on the drug crisis and its impact on Montana. He says, quote, I agree with President Trump. We have a crisis on our southern border. Mexican meth is coming into Montana and destroying families across our state. Congress must come together and do the right thing. Back here in Billings, School District 2 officials are reaching out to Washington elementary parents after a third grade student took a handgun to school on Tuesday. Superintendent Greg Upham tells Q2 school authorities were made aware of the incident at the end of the school day. Parents in that student's class received a call from school principal Dee Dee Larson. Upham says more communication will go out again today. Although the district is not releasing details, Upham says it is a serious issue when a child brings a handgun to school. He said, quote, the school, uh, excuse me, the child obviously made a poor decision, but did not have any intent to hurt or harm anyone. No word yet if the gun was loaded. Be on the lookout this morning for a pre-release center inmate who walked away from the men's Alpha House late last night. We're told 40-year-old Ronnie Peace left the center in downtown Billings around 1030 last night. He is 6 feet 2 inches tall, weighs 278 pounds, and has black hair and brown eyes. Peace is currently serving a sentence for criminal endangerment out of Yellowstone County. If you see him, do not approach Peace, but contact authorities immediately. He now faces an additional 10-year sentence for felony escape. Several homes in Lockwood are without power this morning after a fire broke out, damaging a trailer and power pole. This was the scene around 9 o'clock last night on the 200 block of Loman Lane. A trailer was fully engulfed in flames. The Northwestern Energy Outage map currently shows four customers without power. The cause of the fire is under investigation. There's no word if anyone was injured. A monumental day in Washington, D.C. for a Montana man as the U.S. Supreme Court heard oral arguments on tribal treaty law. The hearing is a first for Clavin Herrera, a member of the Crow tribe, but not a first for tribes across the nation as the issue of whether historic treaty rights hold up in modern day. Herrera appeared with members of the Montana ACLU as the hearing got underway in our nation's capital Tuesday. He was cited for hunting elk in the Bighorn National Forest in Wyoming without a license and out of season. Herrera believes hunting is lawful under the 1868 Treaty of Fort Laramie. Wyoming game wardens contend Herrera violated laws on occupied land. It could take months for the U.S. Supreme Court to rule on this case. Justices ask questions to each side concerning previous cases on tribal agreements. Those representing Wyoming say the establishment of the Bighorn National Forest made it occupied land. Members of the Montana ACLU who sat in on Tuesday's hearing say justices seem skeptical of Wyoming's arguments that statehood terminated the Crow tribe's rights to hunt and fish. A decision is set to happen in the late spring or early summer of this year. A former Montana state prison guard now finds herself behind bars after sneaking contraband to an inmate. 24-year-old Nicole Dyer was sentenced on Tuesday to 13 months with seven months suspended. She pleaded guilty to sneaking a cell phone to an inmate at the Deer Lodge prison in June of 2016. Prosecutors say inmates enticed Dyer to bring the cell phone so they can get drugs into the prison. 
Before Dyer's sentencing, the judge also sentenced the inmate involved, 36-year-old Alfred Joseph Smith, to 13 months for his role in the conspiracy. Well, there's a concern and call for action following the death of a 14-year-old lame deer girl. On Tuesday, U.S. Senator John Tester released a letter to FBI Director Christopher Wray and Acting BIA Director Gerald LeCount. In it, Tester says the response to Henny Scott's disappearance was inadequate and she isn't the first. Tester says these delayed and effective responses on Indian reservations are a trend and there needs to be a much higher standard to protect sti citizens in Indian country. In 2018, at least 24 Native Americans went missing in Montana. A majority of them were women and some have never been found. In 2016, the National Crime Information Center cited 5,712 reports of slain or missing Native American women and girls. However, only 116 of those cases were logged into a Department of Justice database. A bill to help in reporting and finding missing persons and reducing violence on reservations failed to pass through the House during the last congressional session, and the senator who was leading its way, North Dakota's Heidi Heitkamp, lost in November's midterms. So now Senators John Tester and Steve Daines have picked up the bill to take it forward. Meanwhile, between Livingston and Big Timber, there's controversy over plans for a windmill farm. Patton Energy has plans to install 500-foot wind turbines between the Yellowstone River and the Crazy Mountains. A coalition made up of local residents is trying to stop those plans. Patton Energy says the farm will support up to 100 jobs during construction and six full-time positions once complete, along with property taxes benefiting the community and the production of clean power. But for now, it's all on hold due to a lawsuit by neighbors who say their property values will go down due to obstructed views. Stockman Bank is offering a helping hand to those affected by the government shutdown. The Montana Bank is offering assistance in the form of deferred loan payments for furloughed government workers. Billings Bank President Wayne Nelson says they will work on a case-by-case -case basis to help ease the stress of going without a paycheck. Nelson says the deferred payments are huge because they can help keep a person's credit score intact. You know, we're a community bank uh, based only in Montana, so we've done this in other cases like with wildfires and large layoffs of uh, various employers across the state. So this is one of those things where I knew it hit a pocket of our customers, and just to be proactive and let them know that, you know, kind of they can stop worrying about it, uh, you know, as much as they can. And once the shutdown is over, the bank will restructure debt for borrowers as necessary. On November 28th, a fire blazed through the building that housed the Habitat for Humanity Restore in the Grand House Gym. Since then, the community has been helping in any way it can to help get the businesses back on their feet. Fusion Fight League held its Fight for a Cause benefit to raise money for the Grindhouse in December. And on Tuesday, the league was able to present the owner of Grindhouse with over $22,000. I kind of I love what, what's happened because of it, to be honest. Like, I was sad to lose my location, and I had a really big gym with, like, everything you needed to train everybody. But now moving out here, we're able to partner with Yellowstone CrossFit. They share the building with us. It's amazing, like, our community reached out. It's going to be a long time for we get money from insurance or lawsuits or anything else like that. So, yeah, it's, it's a godsend. The Grand House is happy to be up and running despite the setback from the fire. It's now located at 2601 Overland Avenue on the west end of Billings.